Thanks, guys. Um, great job, Rubens. I was sick. I caught the last little bit um, as I was trying to finish my presentation here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to, I guess I should share my little, oh, I can't share the screen while the other participant is sharing. Rubens. Chris, you got to turn your screen share off. <laughs> Uh, how do I do that? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I have a little presentation. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, human factors in avalanche terrain. So, can you guys see my presentation or I haven't shown, shared it yet? Oh, oh. I'm not entirely sure. Sorry, this is my first time doing this. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, can you guys, can I get a confirmation that people can see the presentation? How do I see the chat? Um, You're good. Yep, yeah, and see, okay, okay, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm Leanne, I'm from Whistler and I wanted to highlight on my experiences riding powder in the backcountry, um, specifically the human factors in avalanche terrain. And last year I was able to have the opportunity to film um, with the Sherpa Cinema and North Face produced this epic film called Defiance with Victor Delarue and Jake Lavelt, two of the heavy hitters in the backcountry. And um, for those of you guys haven't seen it, it's a high energy action packed film. And there's a segment in there with um, a few avalanches too. And Victor got into one and then I got into the other. So I just kind of wanted to share my experience um, going through that and what went through my head and my crew's head. Um, but I feel like Dave Burton, or I mean, Dave Mossop and Mike Burton, um, who are in charge of the film, did a great job of just like making it feel as eerie as it did in real life. It was really crazy um, watching it and feeling spooked out exactly the same, like how I felt like when I was in the avalanche. And um, we actually had a debate about keeping the avalanches in the film or not in the film. And we ended up having, we decided that it was kind of a good call to showcase the reality of the risk riding in big mountain terrain. Um, yeah, so the truth is there's no way to truly eliminate all the risk in the mountains, um, but we can make best judgment calls that we can to avoid that risk. Um, so I wanna just share my personal thoughts around the whole situation but so this photo right here is um a photo of a north face or northeast facing slope um we had two two week opportunities to film in the first week the first two weeks we actually kind of got skunked so this is the first portion of the second week day one we get to this dope looking um face and I, we all do a lap on it. It was awesome. Checked the avalanche forecast in the morning and it was rated as moderate. And um, there was a chance for a storm slab sliding. So with that in mind, I tried to choose something that was moderate in my head, um, a, a line that just fanned out. And if you just look at the main face, uh, where the wide open bowl is on the right hand side. That's kind of where I decided to go. Uh, second run, I hit this um, little spine and the whole thing popped. Um, I've got a little video here. So I'm, as you can see, super confident. I think I had a false sense of confidence after run one where I didn't really put much pressure on the face. So this is my run two, Ollie off this little nose, almost kind of lost it there. But then from the um, peripheral of my vision, I was just like, oh my God, I'm totally screwed. And then I was like, okay, no more negative thoughts. I instantly switched into like full on aggressive flow state and um, everything became crystal clear. 
and I had remembered that my out was 45 degrees. I had an airbag. I didn't pull it because I was still going. Um, but I just tried to go and it was really hectic. There was some stotch walls that were, that's, that's the end of the avalanche. And they were looking, they were turning into like these jump kind of feelings. You can, I, I basically went airborne from this moment um, right here and then right there. I kind of lost it, but I didn't lose it. So that was good. But yeah, it was super scary. And um, yeah, I just, I was full of adrenaline and I was very glad to make it out. Um, but I think the takeaway from getting into this avalanche was that I underestimated the power of a 20 to 45 centimeter storm slab. And I'm grateful that I had chosen something that fanned out. And um, cause if I, if I didn't land that, off that spine, I could have been very well caught in the middle of it. And then I could have gone over some exposure, which wouldn't have been good. Um, but yeah, so my risk tolerance for the day for this particular scene was that there was, I was gonna ride something that didn't have any exposure. Um, so that happened, that was my first day filming with the guys in the good conditions with the storm slab uh, problem and moving forward. So yeah, this is just me in a couple images that Blake Jorgensen shot right in the middle. Um, oh yeah. And then this is the face that that happened. So you could see where it released and then where I went and I made it to the left there underneath the rocks. Um, but yeah, fast forward a couple days after that, we get to this sick face in Pemby and, um, I don't know if it was in my head, but I was dealing with some like PTSD and I didn't feel that this zone was a, a location that I wanted to really get on first thing in the morning. Again, if you look closely, there's a couple um, old crowns and they were probably pretty recent with some holes underneath. And so I decided that I wasn't, I was gonna step back and not ride and just watch the guys ride and see I just couldn't decipher if it was like my head being like oh you know like um just having I was just a little bit of a head case getting into that abbey and I couldn't decide if it was like a real risk or what the situation was so anyways the guys rode this first line um Jake rides it this is just with my iPhone and I'm standing at the barbecue angle watching them I'm like okay doesn't look too bad. That was sick. Nothing moved at all. Um, and then the, they point out this line for me to do. And I just highlighted that in red. And my concern was that it was just right next to the line that the boys had ridden. And it was a lot longer and it had a bunch of exposure at the bottom. Um, so for that reason, I told the filmers I didn't want to ride that line because of those reasons. And I get back into the heli, go to the top with Jake and Victor, and they could tell that I was a little tense since I skipped out on the first run. And um, Victor was like, hey, are you going to ride that line? And um, I was like, no, go for it. And he ended up riding the line. And this is the front angle. And everything that I had thought was going to happen happened, unfortunately. And I didn't say anything at the top, but I, I watched from the top. Jake and I were pretty much planning a rescue at that point because we just saw these two powder clouds go off in different directions. And Victor um, had an airbag on. He pulled his airbag and somehow he went over all that exposure and came out at the very bottom and was okay. Um, so here, I'll show you. I'll show you guys. I'm just trying to stop the share. Share screen. I'm gonna show you um, Victor's portion and if I can't manage to share it, I'll just put the link in. Okay, this is my avalanche. And then this is Victor dropping in. He rides it super well, insane. And then he 
makes a cut and the avalanche just takes them right over. So yeah, that was a pretty scary moment. Um, and seeing him come out at the bottom was like the best thing ever. It was super traumatic for me because I just, oh, and then here, this photo right here is um, Jake and I were at the top and we ended up just riding these mini spines down to Victor to make sure everything Thing was all good. After that, we ended up stepping back and riding smaller slopes. And I was just super happy about that because I just wasn't comfortable in the risk that we were taking as a crew. And um, yeah, so that happened. What can we learn from this? Well, there's six factors in, um, in human factors dealing with avalanche terrain. Familiarity, acceptance, consistency, expert halo, tracks, and social facilitation. And what I would, if I, I'm going to just kind of go through all of these and, and reflect on um, the judgment errors that we had made. But I was super familiar with Whistler and I knew that we had like a really bad um, dry spell. So I knew the snow was kind of rotting and any snow that was going to be depositing on top of that layer was going to be a problem. So I kind of knew that going into this shoot. And um, when we originally got onto those lines at the beginning, that first phase, I was actually pretty nervous. And I, I did consider what would I do if I got into an avalanche here. Um, but I wanted to keep up with the Joneses and I just wanted to like keep up with everybody else. And I would say this is a part of the expert halo. Like I being a, a female on the team. It was my first trip with the North Face. It was my first year with them. And we were filming with the Sherpas. I just didn't want to um, bail out of something because I, I wasn't truly listening to what my inner gut was telling me. And it was very scared and I just, I didn't speak up. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of things. And also like, tracks um it was the second portion of our trip like we only had um the two weeks with sherpas and we kind of really needed to nail it because we got skunked the first week so there was a lot of exterior pressures involved in why we made the decisions we did um and i and yeah i feel like my risk tolerance was definitely less than everybody else on the crew um, so that was like a, a difficult thing to deal with, but ultimately, um, the biggest takeaway that I, the silver lining to all of this for me, like getting into these avalanches with the, this crew was just to be able to trust yourself and honor your skills, um, and your education because as an, as an athlete or, a, an, a mountain adventurer, don't be afraid to listen to your inner voice and then voice it because I, I could have told Victor my thoughts before he got into that avalanche and it could have turned out if he didn't pull his airbag like guaranteed there's no way that he would have I mean he would have hurt himself big time for sure I'm just so shocked that he ended up popping out at the bottom um, but yeah I think riding with people that have a similar risk tolerance as you is also important um, because I definitely felt like I was a little bit out of my element with what was what we were writing um, at the end of the day. So um, I want to open it up to a little chat if anybody has any questions. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Was... Stop share. Q and A. Had you talked about your escape route if something slid on this day before riding? Um, we hadn't, um, 
I hadn't seen the face that we were riding the day before. We just showed up to the face. And so what you normally do is you show up, you check it out at a bunch of different angles, maybe do a warm up lap. Um, in this scenario, I don't think we did a warm up lap. We just did, we just went straight into filming. Um, but I just looked at it and knew if something popped, I would be, I kept it to myself. I just knew that it, it would be underneath the big rock. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> Let's see. Does anybody have any more questions? Um, no more questions. Oh, what strategies have you figured out to deal with being the only woman? Um, mountain safety videos. Uh, the only women I feel like that the strategy is to um, truly honor my own skills. I had taken my ops one and 80 hour first aid and then I also have 15 years of experience. And I think mentally I just immediately put myself uh, on the lowest part of the totem pole of the group and I shouldn't have. And I think moving forward, um, knowing the decisions and the things that, the, the decisions that I made um, about not riding that one line that Victor did, um, it just reinforces that I should be more confident in myself. And so, yeah, I would say my strategy is to give, to make sure that I give myself more confidence in the mountains when I'm with these people that I look up to because yeah, they may be the best in the world, but at the same time, like I have just as much experience as them. So I need to honor my confidence. Um, how often do you do Abby training? Um, the beginning of the season every year, I'll do like fall face hosts, a professional athlete uh, avalanche training. So I'll do that every single year if I can. Um, and then this year I did my 80 hour first aid. So, uh, and then also with the crew, but, um, to be honest, we didn't do any like crazy Avi training before the photo shoot. We just kind of came together and, and we did have guides on the crew as well that were kind of informing us what the dangers were. So we kind of knew what we were getting into. Um, what sort of assessment goes into skiing versus not skiing a slope? When, uh, same assessment goes wherever wherever I go, whether it's filming or not. Um, we're checking the avalanche conditions and talking to local, like if I'm going to a place where I haven't been before, talking to the locals, seeing how the season's set up. Um, were you guys filming with a supervising guide? Yeah, we had guides. Um, as athletes, are you making slope assessments yourself? Yeah, there was, there were a few times where the guide would say, you know, I wouldn't ride this. If you're willing to accept the risk, then go ahead. But that definitely changed my perspective, my perception. I was definitely, um, I was like, well, then get me back in the helicopter. <laughs> I am good. I don't really want to ride that. <laughs> but I think for someone like Victor, he, who has like a super high risk tolerance, he came from the European mountains where they're just like so much bigger. I think Whistler seemed like a little playground to him. So his risk tolerance was uh, a lot higher than the average person. Um, how do you get back into the game mentally? I think because that was my day one of the shoot, I had a really tough time getting back mentally. I was pretty much turned off um, riding bigger slopes. And as soon as we took it down and eliminated our avalanche risk per se, riding smaller slopes, I gained a huge amount of confidence. And so, yeah, just taking it back to like the first step of riding, just eliminating avalanches altogether. I didn't want to be in any of that terrain. And this year, um, I definitely feel like the first few times we went out into the backcountry, I was very aware of all of the hazards. Um, so yeah, it did, it left a pretty big impression on my mental 
state, I guess, when I go into the mountains and try, I just try to really respect what is going on um, with the conditions. But mountain safety videos. Um, maybe Altus Mountain Guides might have some recommendations for that. Um, but yeah, you guys all have great comments here. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everybody. I wish I could see everybody and we could talk, but I guess it's done. <laughs> Thanks again, um, Ross, for hosting and everything. This is really cool.